What about correlating ultrasound with MRI? We use the same principles as we use with um, correlating mammography, but you also often will have additional landmarks available to you with MR. You may have an adjacent cyst. If you're doing staging MRI for a newly diagnosed breast cancer, you may have the known breast cancer as a landmark in the breast. And you can use that. You can find that landmark and say, okay, the enhancing mass is two centimeters medial to this two centimeter cyst. That's where I'm going to guide my ultrasound. The other thing I like to do is to look for vascularity of a correlating lesion. And I find more often than not that ultrasound correlates of enhancing masses on MRI tend to have some vascularity. Remember that the stakes are high. These are usually abnormalities that are suspicious based on the MRI, and we have to be 100% confident about the correlation. Otherwise, we really should do an MRI-guided biopsy. You need to be 100% because you don't want to biopsy a presumed correlate on ultrasound, have a benign result, and then have to go through all the machinations to prove that that, in fact, was the MRI abnormality. You have to rescan the patient with MRI, look for the clip, look for a change in the lesion. Um, often difficult to get reimbursement in these cases, and then your patient's uh, seeing a large bill. So really, really be certain about your correlation with MRI and ultrasound. So here's a complicated case. This was a 46-year-old woman who had a multifocal breast cancer. Uh, this is her left breast, and we see the dominant mass, which was her dominant cancer, and her satellite cancer, both of which were biopsy proven. In the left breast, there were two additional lesions. There was a lesion at 12 o'clock and a lesion at 3 o'clock. And in the right breast, there was an additional enhancing mass here shown with plateau kinetics in the upper inner quadrant of the right breast. So let's do our ultrasound correlation. Here's the MRI finding. I had a cyst to help me. And let's look at the shape of this mass and its superficial location as it impresses upon the subcutaneous fat. So here's our radial ultrasound, that same lobular shape, same size correlate, and the margination with the superficial fat. So that's really an excellent correlation. The axial image doesn't correlate quite as well because anatomically the axial MR on the um, anti-radial ultrasound are really not, uh, don't dovetail as well anatomically. Um, but similarly, we can see surrounding fat density in this more posterior lateral uh, breast tissue. So that's a very good fit with MRI. Here's left breast lesion 3 at 12 o'clock. We see this oval-type lesion. It's got a funny little notch in it, and it's marginated by superficial fat. Again, now I've oriented the radial ultrasound to be more in line with the sagittal MRI. And here you can see that oval mass. It's got this little, mat, uh, little notch in it that corresponds to the notch on MRI, and it's marginated superficially by fat. On the anti-radial ultrasound, because of gravity, this lesion's a little bit flatter than it was on the uh, prone pendant MRI. But again, very similar uh, shape and mar indistinct margin features. And that was a sclerosing papilloma. And lastly, we have this small round mass, very T2 bright. Uh, this was early in our learning curve. and. Um, I think now we would recognize this as an intramammary lymph node. But again, we're going to look. It's a deep structure. It's round. It fits the size correlate, surrounded by mostly fat, a little bit of becogenic tissue, and we can see the signature uh, vascularity of a lymph node with the efferent uh, vessels exiting the hilum of the lymph node. So those are all good correlations. Here's another correlation with a small enhancing focus. Now, I mentioned that we typically won't do second look ultrasound for enhancing foci because the yield is low. But in this case, because of its superficial location and because of its uh, relationship with the known breast cancer, we have a good idea of where to look. And in this case, we find a very convincing correlate, an oval mass 
marginated by fat superficially and by dense tissue posteriorly. And again, we see vascularity within it. Not only that, but we can see a parallel vessel that we also see on MRI. So using other landmarks to find the lesion in question. 